dressed in white. God's the gonna trouble the water. Well, they must be the children of the Israelites. God's a gonna trouble the water. Sitting, wet in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's a gonna trouble the water. Now the hour is late, you must confess. God's a gonna trouble the water. To do justice in your ways, in your towns and in the wilderness. God's a gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's a gonna trouble the water. As with Moshe, Miriam, and Nachshon too. God's a gonna trouble the water. This great salvation, it is up to you. God's a gonna trouble the water. Last time, way in the water. Way in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's a gonna trouble the water. Welcome everyone to the Tikkun Olam Committee's uh, panel and ritual mashup, uh, completing the circuit, bringing the Shefa down to Asiya, rededicating ourselves to Tikkun Olam. We want to just start by acknowledging that um, the city of Denver and the surrounding area where we are right now is the traditional territory of the Ute, the Cheyenne, the Lipan Apache and the Arapaho peoples. We honor their elders past, present and future as well as those who have stewarded this land for many generations. And we ask in this moment, may we become worthy to be here in this land. And we invite everyone to donate to indigenous organizations, both in this area and wherever you live. And now we'll take a moment to breathe with our teacher, Rev. Arthur. So first, breathe in with the consciousness that every breath we breathe has been breathed by a mosquito, a human being, a poplar tree, a frog. All those breaths, the one from animals breathing out CO2, breathing in oxygen, the ones from vegetation, breathing in the CO2 and breathing out oxygen, the breath of life, the breath of life that keeps the planet alive and that's now in serious danger. So add, so take just a moment, to breathe with that consciousness that it's not just your breath, it's the breath of all life. It's nishmat kol chai. Indeed, nishmat 
he gave me to change a few parts of what the way he sings it but he said you want to do it different that's great that's great breathe again just a couple of times breathing in the breath of life as some of you know somewhere between a belief and a commitment of mine is that the yud hey well, hey, it's certainly not Adonai. When my grandmother tried to teach me to say Adonai, when I saw Yudhei Vovle, I said, that's not possible. You know, there's no doing, you know, there's no dollar. She said, I know, just do it. And I did it for about 40 years. But if, but what I discovered was, if I tried to pronounce the Yudhei Vovle, with no vowels, it was just a breath, a breath, the breath of life. I think one of the great, maybe the greatest genius of ancient biblical Israel was simply saying, our God is the breath of everything. That's Echad. There's no other Echad. That's Echad. So breathe. So keeping aware of our breath, we notice the breath moving through the body. The ribs expanding on the inhale. Release on the exhale. And on each breath, drop into a little bit deeper level of awareness. A little bit deeper level of presence in the body. Noticing your awareness moving down through your lungs to the belly and pelvis and legs and feet. On your breath, sprouting roots, reaching down through the floor, through the rooms below, through the foundation of the building, the topsoil, the water table, the rock, reaching towards the molten core at the center of the earth, the pulsing heartbeat of the life that is calling for our help. Feeling that heat rise on the sap of our roots, throwing that life force up and up and up and up through the layers of rock and water and soil and building, arising and swirling through our feet and legs and bellies and chests, pumping on our breath on our heartbeat, with our blood, pumping down our arms, opening the palms of our hands, opening our throats, opening all the openings of the menorah of our face, arising of the crown of our heads as our crowns open to this infinite expanse of sky, the cool, clear, dark, infinite mystery. Drawing that down on the breath into the body, finding our bodies as that place where earth and sky meet, 
right here, right here in this room, in this holy chevra. And now in this moment, we constitute a kehila kadosha, a container for the holy work we are about to do. My teacher, Rabbi Miles Krasen, taught that when we say, love your kin as yourself, that we create both a horizontal and a vertical connection. So let us make that horizontal connection now with all of us here in this room, all of us out in Zoom land. Let our hearts reach towards one another becoming aware in this moment of the love that moves through and among us as we open ourselves in love to one another. And also let us become aware of that vertical connection. Let us reach out to our teachers and our mentors, both living and dead, the ones on whose coattails we can be carried to deeper levels of awareness who can help us become more open vessels for holiness to move through. Within this holy circle, I invite us to let ourselves get in touch with our grief around all the brokenness in the world right now. We usually don't let ourselves feel this grief very deeply. It can be so painful. But we are in a safe space here, held by one another held by the everlasting arms of the Holy One. So we can touch that grief. We can notice where we hold it in our bodies. We won't stay static in it. I promise this circle will carry us through to another level. Yet the first step to change comes when we feel how desperately that change is needed. So we bring to awareness the destruction of the planet, the clear cutting, the oil choking the air, the wildfires, the floods, the pandemics, the beautiful trees dead, the innocent animals dead the precious species that will never return. So many humans imprisoned, tortured, murdered, dead. We let ourselves feel their suffering. We let ourselves be aware of all the greed and cruelty that allowed this to happen. And we mourn. We let our hearts open to these truths. We breathe into those parts of our bodies that have kept us numb. And we mourn. We mourn. We mourn. The king of Nineveh sat in ashes when Jonah told him that his city was to be overthrown. 
Mordecai and the Jews of Persia put on ashes when they learned they were to be destroyed. Tamar put ashes on her head after she was raped. Masechet Ta'anit teaches us that on communal fast days, such as when there was a drought, everyone put ashes on their heads, on the spot where we lay to fill in, to remind us that we are but ashes before the Holy One. Today, we place ashes on our heads, on the spot where we lay to fill in. These ashes are from the White River and Irving Peak fires in Eastern Washington that burned 11,120 acres of forest starting this past Elul. Through our wrongdoings, we have turned forests to ash. As we place ashes on our heads, may we open our awareness to these truths. Trees destroyed, animals destroyed, habitats destroyed, climate change advancing suffering, loss, the threat of the loss of our future, the pain of the earth burning. Akina lechuban ganeiden. Akina lechuban ganeiden. Jeremiah wept. Oh, hearing. Her song, lament in the temple, so wounded. Lament in her temple, so wounded. Alas, my forest are dying. I hear my waters crying. Have all the lessons, the lessons been lost? Oh, that I, oh, that they were pure again. My precious forms of life that are no more. The mighty turn their faces from the poor. Oh, how, oh, how do they feel no shame? Oh, that I, oh, that we, were all again. Bachotiv ke bala. Bidimatayam alchiyam. Amen alchem. Mi kol oaveha. In that night. She weeps and weeps, longing for her lovers who so seldom come to comfort her. <laughs> In a shuva, Kadesh Yamenu Keeden, Kadesh Yamenu Keeden, bring us back to you, 
O soul of souls, spark us to turn to you in love again. As we mend this temple, our Eden, as we mend this temple, our Eden. Kadesh Yamenu Ke'eden Kadesh Yamenu Ke'eden We read this week in Parshat Shmot that Bnei Yisrael moaned because of our enslavement and we cried out. Our plea went up to God and God heard our groaning and remembered the covenant with us. This calling out triggered our salvation. I wonder, can our grief today impel us toward another Yitziat Mitzrayim? bringing us out of rising global fascism, environmental crisis, and raging hate towards those already disenfranchised and dispossessed. From our grief, can we author Ma'asechet Rodfeit Sedek? Perhaps our contribution to this rabbinic, to our rabbinic canon would start. Amar HaRav Zalman, one always be backward compatible. Two, and also be the growing edge, be the bark of Eitz Chaim. And our discussion could begin in Megillat Esther. It is written in chapter verse 14 about Esther. Umi yodea im la'et kazot hega'at lamachut. And who knows if you attained a royal position for such a time as this? What does Megillat Esther say to you? For what were you born? To me, it means that my grandpa Jack did not flee Tsarist Russia on foot all alone when he was 13 years old to walk across that vast country, walk across Eastern and then Western Europe, board a boat to Mexico, walk almost to Mexico's West Coast to find his brother in Guadalajara, then walk north across an unwalled border to the United States to live as an undocumented immigrant for decades in a land where he believed he could be free to live as he did well into his 90s, unpersecuted for his identity and religion. He did not do all this, so something he could never have imagined that he would have a queer rabbi of a grandchild living in a city where armed white nationalists were trying to kill me and my friends merely for being alive while the fascist state was putting people in cages at that very same southern border he had crossed decades ago. Police murdering and unjustly imprisoning black people in droves and attacking innocent protesters in the streets. No, my grandfather Jack did not come to this country for that. Mi yodea and ni yodea. In 2020, I was living in Portland, Oregon, following the lead of black organizers. I was in the streets on the regular, supporting the Black Lives Matter uprising. As it happened, Hashem Yitbarach had brought me to that moment as an executive director of a justice coalition called Portland United Against Hate. We had created a data collection instrument to document the tsunami of hate against Jews, Muslims, BIPOC people, queer people, 
And I turn that instrument into a tool to gather evidence of fascist police rioting against peaceful protesters using tear glass, gas and rubber bullets and flashbangs and bulrushes. A neo deo. I had also been brought to that moment as a lawyer and a rabbi. So I had some credibility, enough credibility that when I spoke at the city council and at the state legislature, they took me seriously when I called for police accountability. And I was friends with so many clergy and I organized 40 of them to attend witness and videotape the unconstitutional rioting of the police. I know, do you? How were you born for this moment? What would the conversation look like in Ma'asechet, Rodfei Tzedek? And what about being the growing edge? Can you imagine the discussion we could record on all of our options? Here's one. Take a cue from our beloved cousin Richard Kaplan, and use Echa to call forth mourning. I've used the final words of black men killed by police to Echa trope in front of City Hall on Tisha B'Av. Officers, why? Do you have your guns out? What are you following me for? I don't have a gun. Stop shooting. I can't breathe. Here's another thought. Use contemporary songs as inspiration and invitation to action instead of just relying on scripture and liturgy and psalms. So you don't have to be observantly Jewish to feel the vibe. Here's one I used dozens of times at rallies and marches composed by Rachel Platten. It feels like it's pulled straight out of this week's Parsha. <clears throat> This is my fight song, take back my life song, prove I'm all right song, my power's turned on, starting right now I'll be strong, I'll play my fight song, and I don't really care if nobody else believes, cause I still got a lot of fight left in me. My prayer is that together we will be backwards compatible and on the growing edge. In this moment, the world is counting on us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rabbi Deborah Kolbodny. Um, thank you for being with us uh, at distance on Zoom. We've heard from uh, Rabbi Deborah Kolodny, who's been bringing a spiritual perspective and an activist passion to racial and economic justice, immigration rights, women's environmental peace and LGBTQI plus causes since 1980. They have spoken at close to 100 rallies and marches, testified to city, state and federal legislative bodies, published books, articles and blogs, conducted hundreds of workshops and been interviewed on radio and television on most of these issues. Their recent work includes leadership in Portland United Against Hate, producing a queer clergy for Black Lives Matter conference, training over 1800 Oregonians in interrupting hate in public spaces, founding the Portland Spirit-Led Justice Alliance, organizing 40 clergy to witness and report on police violence, during the Black Lives Matter uprising and getting arrested at ICE headquarters with 29 other clergy to release asylum seekers in the Sheridan jail. Why are we here? We're here in our Tikkun Olam plenary because the times we live in demand our leadership as Jewish renewal clergy. I want to take this opportunity to thank the program committee for recognizing how important this discussion is to what it means to be Jewish renewal clergy in 2023. We're here to complete the circuit, 
to bring the Shefa down to Asiya. The P.S. Cessna Rebbe, Rabbi Kalanimus Kalman Shapiro, who served as Rebbe of the Warsaw Ghetto, said that the horrible events of the Holocaust were happening because God's holy Shefa had become stuck in the upper worlds and was not flowing down to Asiya as it should. So he suggested we must do all we can to elicit the Shefa down to the world of action. Our panelists are addressing how we can contribute to tikkun olam as Jewish renewal clergy. What do we uniquely add to the conversation? How can we best spend the efforts that we now know we must devote to tikkun olam to save our world from environmental and social disaster and to create a mended and transformed world? How do we complement the efforts of other Jewish leaders? And how can we bring the Shefa down from the upper worlds to manifest in Asiya as it must? Fern and I are so very grateful to be here and to be able to bring you the wisdom of these four leaders to start the conversation we need to have in Ohala, as Ohala, about Tikkun Olam. Rabbi Arthur Wasco, PhD, DHL founded and directs the Shalom Center, a prophetic voice in the Jewish multi-religious and American worlds for justice, peace, and healing of the earth. Reb Arthur created the original Freedom Seder in 1969, co-founded the National Havara Committee, co-founded Aleph, the Alliance for Jewish Renewal, has been faculty at the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College, co-founder of Rabbis for Human Rights North America, now Teruwa. He won a Lifetime Achievement Award as Human Rights Hero from Teruwa in 2014, and was on Forward's list of Most Inspiring U.S. Rabbis 2015. In 2017, RRC conferred on him its honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. He's the author of Seasons of Our Joy, God Wrestling Round Two, down to Earth Judaism, Dancing in God's Earthquake, and 25 other books, Reb Arthur has been arrested 28 times in protests against racism and poverty, USSR treatment of Soviet Jews, US treatment of Latinx refugees, US wars against Vietnam and Iraq, and US nuclear weaponry. Reb Arthur, thank you for being with us today. One of the minor problems of living to 89 is that the, the biography gets longer and longer. <laughs> um, I am honored to follow Deb Kolodny. And I mean, I follow in all the ways you might manage to imagine it. And I want to say the bracha in which we change the way in which we use the breath of life. But I want to be clear that uh, she's part of it, of uh, an extraordinary part of it. And all of our speakings will be part of it. Um, if indeed the yod heh vav -He is a breath, there is the kind, the aspect of the breath that is the soft murmur that Elijah Elianovi heard. And there's also the deliberate conversation in which we shape our breath with our tongues, our noses, our lips to bring each other to hear each other. So, Bruja at Loheinu, a creative force. Bruja, how long? Asher Kichanu, but Mitzvot, who makes us holy by calling us to deeds of connection, connection with all life. 
And for this moment, I mean, we, there are many moments of connection that we honor and bless the, the one with whom connection is necessary and who at this moment calls on us to use our tongues and our lips to aim toward wisdom. Torah is the word from archery. It's not the bullseye. It's not the archer. It's the aiming. And here we intend to try to aim some answers or some new questions toward the question, what does it mean to be Jewish renewal and see Tikkun Olam? So I don't know if you were able to arrange that photograph, uh, but uh, uh, the theory was it was going to be a photograph of a moment, a moment of uh, Reb Zalman. Um, the moment in which in 1991, uh, in the midst of the first Gulf War, he called together, he was still living in Philadelphia, he called together uh, a War of Philadelphia and said, you know, there's a very old notion of what to do when you're threatened by calamity, specifically including war. You call for a tiny seaboard, a communal fast. So he said, why don't we all get on whatever horses we can, go to Washington, D.C., and in the shadow of the Capitol, call for that fast with a shofar and all the other accoutrements that the Talmud tells you you better uh, use to try to bring that fast. So I don't know if we have the photograph, but I can tell you that in it, Zalman is carrying a shofar so big that although Zalman was a pretty big guy, uh, you can't you hardly see him behind the shofar. And uh, around him is a little cluster. Uh, the camera got some, but not all, of the folks from Penaver of Philadelphia. Uh, Phyllis is there, I'm there, a guy whose name I have not been able to recall myself and not been able to find anybody else who remembers who that person is, was in the photograph. And someone is blowing the shofar as part of that. So for me, that's simply a, uh, a moment in a hope, a hope that we can reunite the energies of spirituality, in quotes, uh, the energy of ceremony, of fast, of meditation, uh, of uh, blowing the shofar, uh, all those. And the, we think usually somewhat um, cooler, uh, practices that we call political. But Jewish renewal was built around the hope. That's why it existed. That's why Zalman and I were able to come together to bring the Shalom Center and Pinay work into a single organization, which is what we did in 1993. Uh, it was built around the notion that what we call politics is the spirituality of the whole community. And that spirituality, we usually think of spirituality is always holy, but it can be unholy. You can create an energy in a large or small community that is hateful and ready to burn not to burn like the burning bush internally without destroying, not even the bush it burned in, did it destroy, but burning that burns and destroys. 
how do we build a politics that is social, communal, political spirituality? And how do we bring spirituality into it? The Jewish community of America is going to be facing crisis for at least the next 40 years. Uh, the crisis of democracy and the crisis of the planet, and they are linked, those two. So I want to tell you what, at the Shalom Center, we have begun to experiment and to uh, organize our minds to draw from the experiments. We even created a word. Lewis Carroll, the guy who wrote the Alice books, uh, used to use words that he called portmanteau words. A portmanteau was a piece of furniture that had two different pieces of furniture jammed together. And Carol used to use words like slithy, a slithy tove, as part of his song on the Jabberwocky. Uh, and we coined the word activist, activist, an activist festival. What does it mean to take the festivals into public space? What would it mean to take the festivals not only to celebrate the past, of course, to celebrate the past, but not only, but to transform the future? What would it mean for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of American Jews to confront banks that are investing in burning the planet because they make more money that way to confront them all around the country. Somebody this morning, I think, said, well, it's hard for Jewish renewals to think about Tikkun Olam because we're all scattered everywhere. But there is a Chase Bank in practically every city and town in North America. What would it mean? for a dozen, a hundred, a thousand Jews on the third day, let's say, of Pesach, to gather there and say, no funding pharaohs, no funding uh, the modern corporate carbon pharaohs who are bringing plagues of fire and flood and famine and disease on the whole world, not just on a thin little sliver of land. What would it mean to do that? What would it mean to do, and we did that in 20 US cities plus Toronto, uh, last Pesach. What would, it, what would it mean to do it in 200 cities or 2,000 cities? This past Hanukkah, we, together with of an organization about 50 years old, an organization that started, of all things, as a bar mitzvah project, uh, an organization called Solar United Neighbors, uh, by far the most aware and effective creator of solar co-ops in North America. And we, together with them, did a webinar on the fourth night of Hanukkah. Why Hanukkah? Because it's about light. And solar co-ops could be the new light for the future. I could go on, but it's not really so important for me to go on. More important for you to go on, all of us to go on in our minds and our bodies, our the legs, Heschel said, uh, where our legs, by the way, not our feet, he said, our legs could pray. What would it mean for us? I'll say one last thing. Some of you may remember, I think about five years ago, uh, as the last minute almost joke, the um, program committee of OLA appointed, there had been, they had appointed months earlier, a visiting scholar and a visiting singer. And very, like a dozen days before the, our gathering, they appointed me a visiting prophet. 
So by accident or by sheer providential intervention, Phyllis and I had bumped into a tall branch falling off a tree, a branch that was perfect to use as a walking stick. So I brought it. I brought it. They introduced me. I was the prophet in residence. I threw the stick on the floor. I said, watch it very carefully. <laughs> and we watched for about two minutes. And I said, it did not turn into a snake. And that's because it's not important whether one of us is a prophet. Can oh Allah become a prophetic movement carrying spirit into the spirituality of a whole society that we usually call politics? Well, Reb Arthur, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, teaching and inspiration. May we merit soon uh, to fulfill your words. Rabbi David Seidenberg is the creator of neochested.org and the author of Kabbalah and Ecology, God's Image in the More Than Human World. David was ordained by JTS and by Reb Zalman. His work most often focuses on human rights, animal rights, immigrant rights, and or ecology. He is well known for his liturgical compositions and translations, many on themes related to tikkun olam. David blogs on the Times of Israel and is also an avid dancer and since the pandemic, a composer of Jewish and secular music. Reb David, thank you for being with us. Oh. Thank you, Jeremy. Is this mic close enough? Thank you, Jeremy, and thank you for it. Um, it makes me feel so warm inside to look at Fern and feel our connection. Ah, doesn't get closer. Okay. Okay. What is the purpose of religion? Why do we bother with any of this, really? Religion is a community's response to how do you keep intact a right relationship with the land over multiple generations? Because ethics is not strong enough to do that. You need religion and ritual in order to be able to do that. Our ancestors knew how to do that for a particular land at a particular time in a particular place. And it's been a long time since we've been in that place in the right way that would correspond to that wisdom. I know a lot of us spent last year thinking about what that wisdom meant during the Shemitah year and how we can find a true rest in relationship to the land. One of the things that Shemitah does is it turns the land that we think we own into hefker. And we learn many times in many Midrashim that the reason why the Torah is given in Sinai is because it's a midbar, a wilderness, which is hefker. So essentially in the Shemitah year, we're turning our human spaces into wilderness because that's the place we need to be in order to understand who we are and what we need to become. We have Midbar and Mishkan, those are the two poles, and most of the human life happens in between those two poles. And religion is often about creating conduits of energy and power between those two poles that can vivify everything in between. All our rituals have at least as one of their purposes, that purpose. It seems to me that renewal, more than all of the other movements of Judaism, since the Talmud, at least, perhaps, I don't know for sure, um, is more aware of that than any of the other movements that have come and gone or exist now. And that's constituted in three dimensions, and I want to invoke Sefer Yitzhira, Olam, Shana, Venefesh, world, year, soul, body. 
Remember, of course, there's no distinction between soul and body in the Torah, right? What's a renewal take on Olam and on Shana and on Nefesh? I see it refracted through the lens of Gaia theory, and I think that Reb Zalman emphasized always that everything religion needs to become from now on, the source of the whole paradigm shift is what we call Gaia theory or Gaia hypothesis that everything serves or needs to serve the principle of life that, vivis that vivifies this world. Anything that does not serve that needs to be shed. Everything that does serve that needs to be heightened, magnified, empowered. Olam, I see as all our relations. What constitutes this world that we live in is all the species, the vashot rabot v'chesronan, all the ways that all of the species are interrelated constitute the world itself. Every action needs to live in the dimension of all our relations, needs to be responsive to and uplifting and honoring all, all our relations, all the species. Shana, year. I think a Gaia perspective on that is deep time. That we that it is the principle of life, not humanity, had been around for some billions of years. That we're a kind of wavelet on top of this very giant wave. We human beings, we Jews, we whatever we want to be. How, do, how does our work serve a deep time perspective? How do we keep in mind and in heart a deep time perspective? That what we can do is nothing compared to the whole, and yet, everything compared to the moment. And the last is nefesh. One thing that we really excel at is embodiment. Dancing, singing. I, I don't think there's any other group that would dance as quickly as we do. Everything about embodiment is also everything that has been attenuated in the large part of Jewish history. It has to do with exile. It has to do with a lot of other factors. But we, I wouldn't say we've shed that limitation, but I would say that we are actively, constantly resisting it, that limitation, and seeking embodiment. These three principles, well, I want to say, of course, forgot to mention. Embodiment is also about connecting to the body, which is connected to the earth and from the earth. We are Adama. This is the Adama that we're connected to. So when we connect to embodiment, we connect to the earth as well. Uh, so when we do these three dimensions, uh, when we reflect on these three dimensions, everything we do politically needs to be responsive to and honoring and aware of all three of those and needs to be in alignment so we talk about politics being putting your bodies on the line, but first we need to put our bodies in alignment, and then we can put our bodies on the line. The goal is the same goal that we read in the first two Bishvat Seder, the pre Hadar. Yeshuv hakol le'etano harishon. Oh, thank you. To return the whole to its original strength, or its originary strength. There's no one original strength, but there are many origins of strength that we need to hark back to, to open the channels up, to bring forth the flow. And that's the Shefa. Um, I've been talking for five minutes, so I'm not going to say many other things that I've thought about. Um, I do want to say one more thing, though. We read two weeks ago, two Shabbat Torah ago, rather, that Joseph enslaved Egyptian society by uprooting people from their land, their ancestral land, and moving them from one end of Egypt to the other. We live in a world where constantly we are being uprooted from our land. We need to connect to land, and what that means is going to be different for each person, and I want to invoke the concept of doikait, hearness. That's part of uh, some parts of Yiddish culture. And I'll also mention one last thing because it leads into... Um, Tirza a bit, which is connection to the land is not the same as connection to country. And connection to country generally leads into leads us into fascism, as we've seen and are seeing. Connection to the land needs to lead in the opposite direction. Okay. Many more things to say. Thank you for listening.
Thank you, Reb David, for uh, starting the conversation that, as you say, uh, needs to continue. And uh, we hope that this will be the beginning uh, of a conversation that we'll have all year. Um, thank you, Reb David. Uh, Rabbi Tirza Firestone, ordained in 1992, is an author, a Jungian psychotherapist, and founding rabbi of Congregation Neve Kodesh in Boulder, Colorado. She teaches ancestral trauma healing internationally. Reb Tirza, thank you so much for being with us tonight. You got the you got the short bio, which is good, and and I must have gotten the wrong memo. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, because I was I was asked to tell a story of us, uh, but uh, so I will do that. But I want to say first of all that um, um, it's it's very deep medicine to be here, and uh, this Avira, this environment is very healing. Uh, and it, yes, dance could break out at any moment, or deep healing could break out at any moment. And I I feel that I feel the love and. Uh, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful to be here. Um, so many teachers. I want to start uh, just to say that my, that I didn't, I'm not in those pictures, but I took a couple of those pictures of my co, uh, my co-chair, Ellen Littman, with me in Israel at the Olive Harvest, just right over, over there. And uh, so she's here, and as well as other, I want to give honorary mention. Did you ever think about that word, honorary mention? These are honorary mention, the 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 mentions that uh, that <laughs> that uh, uh, all all many of whom are here and and uh, uh, Rabenu Art Arthur. Uh, I just want to say that it's a it's an honor to sit at the same on the dais with you. Um, I also want to say that a teacher, a great teacher of mine, is Rabbi Michael Lerner, who I do not believe is here. May he be fully healed. And uh, and my story today has to do with Rabbi Eric Usherman, uh, who many of you know, I'm sure, and uh, Professor David Shulman in Israel, uh, uh, one of the founders of Ta'ayush, and uh, Dr. Malila Helner, uh, I, one of the leaders of Sulcha, because I'm going to take you across the great waters to, uh, to the Holy Land. Uh, with a story that's emblazoned in my memory uh, years ago before COVID and before uh, Trump and before George Floyd and all of the deep, deep hatred and trouble that surfaced in this land. Um, I did a lot of human rights work in Israel, Palestine and uh, with, with Shovrei Shika, with, it doesn't matter, Stolcha, with rabbis for human rights, but one year in particular, there was a, a a bad spate of home demolitions in Israel. Now, um, there's you know Israel is a minefield, so everyone gets nervous. We start talking about Israel, and I I just want to come from my heart and say this is a very complicated situation, but there's a lot also of 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 deep. Um, I think it's what threw me into actually my human rights work in Israel and Palestine was exactly, I wasn't going to say this, but it's very true. It's what threw me into my work on intergenerational trauma because when I went into the West Bank and I saw the separation barrier and I saw the deep suffering in the refugee camps and I saw the, the militarized occupation there, I was like I, I was horrified and my whole mythical structure started to wobble and, and shake. And um, I realized there's only one, there's only one reason we could be in this situation in Israel. And that's from our unprocessed trauma and our ungrieved, ungrieved tragedy. So that's a whole other trajectory. So I won't go there, but I, one year there was a particularly bad spate of home demolitions, and I was there with a, a group of rabbis. I believe it was a group of, uh, it was pre trua So it was at Rabbis for Human Rights, North America, and we were there. And um, a group of maybe seven rabbis went for a kind of shiva call to a family whose home had been completely brought down into rubble. I mean, it was really, it was, it was awful. It was uh, just, it was just, 
piles of cement and rebar and this horrendous destruction. And the family, um, I, I, I doubt this could happen today, that a group of rabbis with kippot on could go into West Jerusalem or into the West Bank and just and visit, but that's what we did. And we sat on the rubble with some family members, many of whom didn't want to be visited, but it was really like a, the biggest shiva call because we were sitting in the midst of a churban. And what were they going to do? You know, they're all their desks and computers and everything was, was just rubble. And it wasn't from, by the way, you may be sitting there asking, oh, well, they probably had a terrorist in their family and they did a suicide, there was a suicide, but it wasn't that. It was that they hadn't uh, received a permit, uh, a correct permit from the administrative office. And so their house was destroyed because they had deigned to build an extra room for some kids who had grown up and gotten married and didn't have a place to live. So now they had no house. So we were sitting there, clearly uh, Ashkenazic Jews. Um, we were sitting there with an uncle and boys. And we just sat as they, as this man, one in particular, I remember, cried and railed. It was like a deep, a deep mourning that was going on and a deep rage that was going on, understandably. Um, and there were no words that we could say. We were just, we just sat. And just the act, just that act of coming into a Palestinian village in the midst of this sha'on, this, this, this sort of catastrophic event for the family, um, was a, a, a moment that I'll never forget. Um, but that was not what was so memorable about it. What was so memorable and so remarkable, and this too was something that went deep in me and it made me, like made my, my inner alchemy churn. It was that there were all around were young boys, probably Mm, seven or eight to 16. So these are young men and young men and boys from the family, from the neighborhood, from the, like we were in a Palestinian village, uh, like maybe a suburb of Jerusalem. And, um, and they, something happened where they all, you know, we were there and they, all of a sudden they started to pull out guns out of their out of their jackets and out of their shirts now these were plastic guns these were toy guns and some of them just had fingers but they were serious they were all around us and they were they weren't not at us but they were just firing and there was like a a, a piece of uh sort of theater that was going on where they were showing us something they were making a statement um they were telling us uh, that this, that these young men were not powerless, that these young men were going to grow up, that they were now in training, so to speak, and they would fight for the honor of their elders, and they would uh, fight for their people, and that they were recording everything. They were registering everything. Okay. That's the story. I will never forget that. It was powerful. And I realized, wow, 10 years, these kids are going to be grownups. These kids are going to be out in the field. And, and so that was the moment that I understood how our actions and our policies as individuals and as whole ethnicities, every single minute, every single, single action that we take plants seeds. It plants seeds, whether or not we know that it plants seeds for the next generation. And the question really is, and I'll end with this, are we planting seeds of self-interest, of indignity, of care for others, care for ourselves? Um, are, we care, are we planting seeds really just for uh, to circle our wagons and to say we count more and our land is our land and this is our place and this is or and these are really and this was uh, I mean I came back from from these trips to the West Bank feeling that there I had I had encountered reshoot it's not a word I use reshoot 
if I were a Sephardi Jew, I, I had really encountered a kind of wickedness and that these are seeds, uh, yes, self-protective, understandable, justifiable, perhaps you might argue, but they were seeds of poison that were planted in the ground that would sprout, that would flower, that, that would bear fruit eventually and eventually come back to, uh, to poison us all to harm us all? Or are we planting the seeds of care for others, of foresight, looking ahead to see what our actions are going to bear? Are we planting seeds of love, uh, of seeds of uh, foresight of what comes after us for our next generations? These will ultimately flower and bear beauty and kindness and, and care and they will last. And those will be the fruits of peace for the next generation. And this, I think, is tikkun olam. So I'll end just to say my current favorite pasuk, just to bring a, a word of Torah in, is, Hine bati b'megilat sefer katuv alai. I came into this world with a Torah scroll. Many of you talking about megillas um, so beautifully. A Torah scroll written betoch I. Each one of us has a Megillah, has a Torah that's written inside of us. We come to the world knowing what is the Torah that we need to deliver. And for each one of us, it's different for each and every one of us. And uh, it's according to our own heartbreak. It's according to our own passions and talents. And, and we don't have to go to Israel and we don't have to, to even, I mean, God forbid, we don't have to go to, you know, to, 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 Maybe for some of us, it's not protesting in public, but for each one of us, we need to think about the seeds we are planting by our actions, the seeds we're planting with our lives, how far they go, and are they seeds of love? I know that each and every one of us here are, are doing God's will, and may the tikkun olam seeds be beautiful seeds, and thank you so much for having me be part of this. Thank you all so much for uh, your words of wisdom. I'd like to invite if uh, people are comfortable coming up and making a circle in the front here. If you don't feel comfortable, it's fine to stay where you are. But for this last bit, I would love for us to really feel ourselves, whether it's physically or just uh, on some other level, ourselves as a, as a holy circle here together. And let's just take a moment to breathe and really take in everything that we've heard here, all the words of wisdom and inspiration, and acknowledge that we are truly living in a time of crisis. Reb Zalman taught us that when there's an emergency, we should chant the Anabakoach, and in a moment we'll do so, to bring down the Shefa, to draw down compassion, to help us find our next steps in world repair. But first I want to uh, remind us of the words of Reb Nachman of Bratslav, who taught that memory was created to remember the future. We fix the past by remembering the future. So let us remember, who are we as Ohala? What is our particular role in repairing this world? What are we to do as spiritual leaders of our movement? How do we bring the flow down from the highest heights and the deepest depths to this suffering world? How do we enact another Yitziat Mitzrayim? Rab Zalman taught us to awaken compassion by drawing down through the levels from the transcendent nothingness, the flow of compassion from that place that is beyond the beyond, where all is one, where all change comes from. 
He taught us to carry whatever needs fixing with us, to take the elevator up, as it were, to the yod of the divine name. And so we do, carrying this broken world with us. We take the elevator up to Keter, up to the nothingness, up to the beyond the beyond. Right now, up to where we are all a piece of the transcendent divine, where the neshama is fully, fully in the divine, where there is no evil, the place of ehiyeh asher ehiyeh. Where we are each a chip off the old block, the other is a chip off the old block. We are now merging into the old block, merging into the source of life, where all is good. From here enters the yes to creation. So we pray the Anabakoach, chanting the first line here in the highest, deepest place, and drawing the flow through the levels into this broken world with us, bringing down compassion, remembering our next steps. Good or let him in a car.
We don't have to decide the exact details right now, but we are invited in this moment to center the knowledge that kol ha'olam arevim zelazeh, the whole world is interwoven. We are all responsible. That is, we are all able to respond. As individuals, as a movement, let us commit to completing the circuit, to awakening compassion. Let us commit to doing our part to fixing this world. If you are ready to make that commitment, please step forward as our Hevra come around with olive oil to anoint us. As we collectively step into Meshichut and commit to being part of the redemption of this world. Olam chesed yibane. Yada da 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 yada da da. Olam chesed yibane. Yada da 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 yada da da. And we build this world with love. Then God will build this world from love. Yada da 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 da. Olam chesed yibane. Yada da 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 da. Olam chesed yibane. Oh, oh, said May our steps be blessed. May our work be blessed. May we all be a blessing for this broken world. Amen. Be amen. 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 I knew like you would totally get it all. <laughs> we, we're kind of from the same world, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
it really worked out really tremendous with the family with all the kids that we sent up there. Sorry, I missed you. I got a vibe in my Here's a reminder that we're going to honor Mariv in just a few minutes. I think we can unmute ourselves if we're on Zoom, yes? <laughs> Until Marie. That was good, huh? Oh my gosh. That was outstanding. That was oh. remarkable. Just remarkable. I really, I, my cover did good, my Tikkun Olam committee. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They, it, it <laughs> was really phenomenal. I, so was it, was it Shoshana who was singing? I think so. It sounded like her. Um, it was gorgeous, right? And so mm -hmm. she is on the committee and I think uh -huh. they were really smart to ask her to. Yeah. She's always or, saying, I don't know what I can do. Like, what? <laughs> this this is what you can do. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Deb, so good to see Deb. So good to Looking see. So good. Yeah. yeah. Where are she still here? I, I don't think, think that was. To, yeah. It's I late here was, in the East Coast. It's <laughs> very late. Way. It's like, yeah. it's but 11 o'clock. I think that was Fern that was singing. I don't think that was. Who you said it? I think it was Fern. No, no, no. It was Fern was singing, uh, but also folks. If you can hear this announcement, that's fine. If not, don't worry. But I'm going to take some folks out a little before one o'clock to do some pre-mincha four directions davening preparation for mincha tomorrow, right we after <laughs> the beginning part of lunch. David, rib, David. we will go out into the snow. Yes. Whatever little bit there is. I miss that so much. I just love these people. Uh, okay. But you know, you're right, Jessica. We're having our own little Zoom experience. And I think we will be able to think about how to do more. Like the last two years when we were on the Hoova, we right. could arrange all kinds of ways, but we it was too much to do both completely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're, you know, we're getting smart about all this. Yeah. Laat, laat, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of my <laughs> mottos. I think that's, it, it, that's a wise one. And I, I do think, you know, as we, as we think about how can it, it reminds me, when I started the Kihila, it, we used a model for learning that was based on, at least for me, uh, not a novel idea, probably in the history of of humankind, but for me, it was based on um, Mitch Chaffetz's book, not the one that everybody knows, but the thirty third hour, where he talks about this little kila that creates an educational program where everyone is there, and they just break off and then they come back together, and they break off and they come back together. This was multi generational, but this to me, that that's what I was thinking of today. Like, how can we come together for plenary sessions and then you know for those of us who are you know having having to do it this way how can we enrich this for people who are online um while you know kind of parallel playing with those people who are in person yeah yeah, yeah. i think it's yeah. doable just have so to it's... invent some some devices <laughs> we're doing it yeah I yeah, yeah I, I mean, it. but I'm going to just say good night and, and send love to everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye Lori. Thank you. So good to see everyone. So good to see, see everyone. Well. And, and, and.
Diane, thank you for your kind words, Diane. And um, who else is, is, is uh, Ellen still Deb here? Rodney living now? Uh, Western Massachusetts. Uh, I believe from Western Massachusetts. Look, Reb Leia's here. Hello, my dear. Where's Leia? Where's Leia? I just see her box. I did I see, know. I did see her, yeah. It's very mm -hmm. late. I think I'm going to have to say good night too. But yeah. uh, we have uh, one more thing, I think, tomorrow. Yeah. Lovely to see you. Hi, They're going to leave. Marie. Oh, we could stay for davening, but maybe I'm going to, um, obviously, we need to, what you call it, mute. And maybe I'll close my eyes. <laughs> okay. How do we? I'm working on a new computer. <laughs> I'm so. Yeah. Sorry. Well, she told. I'm plugged in. Um, I don't know if it's on. I don't know how she's doing it. Though. Thank you. It's car. It's carbon. Um, what's it called? Carbon. What? Fiber. Fiber, yes. Okay. I mean, you could just you could start the nigging beforehand or something, or like the room, and if you want. I'll give you. I'll give you the okay. <laughs> Mari, oops. You still have to Okay. 
we can bless, we can bless. I am a blessing, we can bless, we can bless. I am a blessing, we can bless, we can bless. I am a blessing, we can bless. Did you think yet today, I am a blessing? Did you think yet to yourself, I am a blessing? We enter our service with reminding ourselves that each one of us is a blessing, that we have the capacity to bless, that it's our responsibility to bless each other and God because we are a blessing, each one of us is a blessing and it's a blessing to have Jesse Romer playing guitar for this Ma'ariv Shma Al Hamita combination service that we're gonna dive in together now. So we sing those words as we call to prayer that we can bless knowing that you are a blessing. I am a blessing. We can bless, we can bless. I am a blessing, we can bless, we can bless. I am a blessing, we can bless. Barhu. Et Adonai, Hamevorah. to darkness and it cycles in and out we feel the flow of the regular movement of the clock in light we fly through space and breathe as one planet in the miraculous nature of holy creation and destruction and creation. <laughs> Roll away light into darkness and darkness into light. Roll away light into darkness and darkness into Shema Ah. 
you now to get comfortable in your seat and softly close your eyes. Roll your shoulders back and down. Relax your arms, your hands. Find a connection between your body and the ground, between your body and the cosmos. Relax your face Swallow and allow your tongue to drop from the roof of your mouth. Take in a deep breath, expanding your chest and your belly. Out through your belly and your chest. In the name of yud heh vav -Heh, I call upon the angels to surround and embrace me. God of the people Israel, on my right is Michael. On my left is Gavriel. In front of me is Uriel. Behind me is Raphael. And on my head, surrounding me, is the Holy Presence, Shekhinah. I start on my right side and feel the angel Michael, who is like God. In Michael, I feel the flow of chesed, of loving kindness, of protection and patience. Michael, is the first to do God's will. Through the angel Michael, I see all of creation in a single glance. Michael 
is the preeminent messenger of the divine who knows my innermost thoughts and gives them as love letters to the Holy One. On my left, I feel the angel known as Gabriel, strength of God. On my left side is power and bravery. Gabriel keeps me believing I have the fortitude to last through any situation. I am called to be steadfast when Gabriel blows the shofar, the blast of the shofar from the angel Gabriel opens me up to seeing the truth of my own life. The notes of the shofar remind me to stand strong and grow. In front of me, before my eyes, is the angel Oriel, God's light. I can see a path illuminated in front of me, and the angel Oriel guides me forward. Oriel is light and holds the burning torch to illuminate the way. There is always a path forward, even when it is only one step at a time. Oriel prevents me from becoming lost. And this angel's light is always moving in front and forward. I can focus on the light ahead and know that the angel Oriel guides me to Hamakom. Behind me is the angel known as Raphael, God heals. Whatever is behind me, whatever has already happened and I cannot change, is healed through the presence of the angel Raphael. Raphael teaches me about time and helps to bring peace and healing at the right moment. When my body feels broken, or I become ill, Raphael works to send energies of healing and wholeness from my back. Raphael is behind me to support me and not let me fall. Upon my head rests the Shekhinah, the glorious, sweet, nurturing, feminine presence, the touch point between heaven and earth rests right upon me, right above the crown of my head. When I notice the Holy One resting with me, then the flow of energy surrounds and embraces my entire being. And worry, sadness, and uncertainty are removed and float away. In the presence of the divine, I am an element of timelessness and hold hands with eternity. On my right is Michael. On my left is Gavriel. In front of me is Oriel. Behind me is Raphael. And upon my head is Shekhinah. I am surrounded and supported by the heavenly hosts. My body and my soul together are loved and embraced. A shelter of protection is on every side, 
and the love of the divine rests upon me and flows within me. If you haven't yet opened your eyes, you can feel free to do so, bathed in the protection and love of the angels and the Holy One, Adonai Li Velo Ira. Adonai Velo Ira, Adonai Li Velo Ira. Adonai leave Eloira, 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 Adonai leave Eloira. Ya sees, ya hears, ya knows, ya loves. Adonai leave Eloira. Ya sees, ya hears, ya knows, ya loves. Adonai leave Eloira. 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 Ya sees, ya hears, ya knows, ya loves. Adonai leave Eloira. Ya sees, ya hears, ya knows, ya loves. Adonai leave Eloira. Adonai leave Eloira. Adonai leave Eloira. Adonai leave Eloira. Adonai leave Eloira.
If you're remembering someone at this time who you're saying Kaddish for, I invite you to rise. We say together, Vika dal, Vika da, Shemei Rabba, Vialma divra chirte, Vialich machute, Vichayechon, Vialmechon of Chaye de Chol Beit Yisrael, Vagala, Vizman, Kari, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shemei Rabba, Mevarach, Leolam, Mome, Omaya, Vibarach, Vishabach, Vipaar, Vitromam, Vitnasa. Vita dar, vita le, vita lal, shme de kudesha, brichu. Le ela, min kol berchata, vashirata, tush berchata, venechamata, da miran, be alma, be inru, amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya. Bechaim alenu, be al kol yisrael, be inru, amen. O se shalom bim romav, hu ya a se shalom, alenu, be al kol yisrael. Val kol yoshvei tevel v'imru, amen. We're going to conclude with the words from Reb Zalman. It is perfect. You are love. All is clear. And I am holy. It is perfect. You are love. All is clear. And I am holy last time. It is perfect. You are love. All is clear. And I am holy. Erev Tov. Boy, that was beautiful. I had no idea at least had such a beautiful, lovely singing voice. Now I'm really going to go to bed. <laughs>